Alright, finally I got them all! Today we talk about Ratchet! Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Dreamson! Today we talk about the rescue pioneer JH01 aka the KO MPM11 movie transformer Ratchet. Have a look, the packaging is really nice. I like the artwork with the iconic pattern which is resemble Ratchet. Also, the box material is really really good. I especially like the pattern printed around the box. It's kind of a new thing and it looks really really cool. From the printing quality, I would say this is the most best quality KO figure box so far. Let's have a quick look. Here we see it's printed with JH01 diecast metal transformations. And this line is really funny. Usually we only see it in the restaurant menu. They don't even have the picture about the figure, but they print it all over the box. <laughs> I don't know why. And here is the QR code for the transformation video, but you need to scan it with the WeChat apps. But no worry, I will show you the transformation step by step. With this video, you don't need to scan it anymore. Alright, let's check it out inside. Here we go, we have the KO MPM11 Ratchet. As we can see, it comes with very nice plastic crankshaft with the accessory. And also, they included one extra arm missile accessory. But the one I get from the seller is come with this not presentable plastic at all. I'm not sure it's the original plastic bag, but <laughs> ew. I'm not gonna keep this thing. Alright, have a look. The extra cannon actually identical with the one inside the crankshaft. The material is good, unfortunately I don't have original MPM11 to compare but mainly in this review, I only review whatever I got from this figure. Alright, let's open up and get a closer look. Wow, the first impression for me, this figure is solid. It's heavier than I expected and it's really firm. Not only the color, the figure quality itself is really nice compared to other MPM figure. When it comes out of the box, the bot mode it hasn't transformed correctly. And here I like to show you some of the detail that I noticed. The first definitely the front line sections. In this section, you can actually line up in this way. And also in optional, you can lock it with the shoulder. As you can see, there's a hole there you can pinch it in. But after you pinch in, they will limit the movement. So I designed not to do that. And also, I believe they do have a different way to display. You can do it like regular, sit on the front of the bumper, or you can slot in between the bumper. But this is really personal reference. It depends how you like to do it. And the second, in this bumper section, you can release it to the higher point. But for my opinion, I will leave it flat. And the third is this front spotlight section. You can set it in the right angle. Simply push the section below. If you have a small finger or you can using a two, push all the way up and they should stay in place. And it looks better that way. And also the front bumper that you can see there is a slot over there. All you need is adjust it in the correct angles and fold aside. They should sit well on the position and lock it in place. And this is how it look like. But anyway, it really depends how you like to display it. I would prefer not fully folded the bumper side panels and angle up in this way. In my personal reference, it's more representable to the original CGI ratchet. And next is these two side sections. All you need is angle up this way. They actually have a slot just right at the back sections. And then line it out and fold it in. And push it in like so. It will simply lock it in place. And this is the proper way it's designed for. Although there's no pin and holes and it's still locked and stay in place securely, this relies on the good engineering design. At the first, when I look at the original design MPM11, this section is actually bothering me. It looks like a deer horn all the time. And I'm so glad it's come with the option that you can fold it in. And also don't forget to rotate the siren in the correct way when you transform to the bot mode. And the next is the wheel at the backpack sections that you can push it, flatten it like so when it's in the bot mode. And last but not least, it's the lower inner five sections. As you can see, they are pinned here. You can push it in all the way and they should lock it in place. And it will look more neat and tidy. I have to say it again, I'm really impressed with this figure. As we all know, the major change is they have refined the color of the figure, not only in the robot mode and also the vehicle mode. Compared with the original MPM11 color scheme, the improvement has been done dramatically. But again, we need to give back the credit to the original design. Without them, this would not gonna be happened. 
When talk about design, let's do a quick comparison. Here is one of my collection, the Voyager class Ratchets, which I have also custom made the chest side but not yet finished. I collect this years ago, after the many years, as we can see from the design and the detail, this NPM release is definitely reached the masterpiece level. And the next we compare with the Iron Warrior model kit Ratchets. This is also one of the most movie accurate Ratchets model kit that I collect years ago. Till now I still display it with my other Transformer movie figure. Again, as we can see, for me the NPM Ratchets look better and with great detail. Compared to the model kits, it can definitely replace it and it also can be transformed. What a great design. Alright, next we have NPM Ironhide. After these many years, before the NPM Ironhide comes out, everyone actually have a great expectation. But unfortunately, when we got it in hand, we all know there is a problem about the shoulders and also the back. And I believe I don't need to mention another tiny problem it had in this Ironhide figure. And surprisingly, this figure is about the same height. But in the movie upgrade, the Ironhide should be about 2 feet taller than Ratchet's. And next, we're gonna compare one of the best designs in NPM range, the NPM 09 Jazz. I have to mention it, this is another NPM KO figure. I couldn't find any reference compared to the movie. Is this an Arcry scale? But anyway, they look good together though. And next we have the NPM 03 Bumblebee. For my opinion, I think this Bumblebee is actually slightly too big. Or should I say the Ratchet is too small? Based on the research I got, Bumblebee is about 4 feet shorter than Ratchet's. In this case, the DMK Bumblebee model kit seemed the perfect match with this NPM Ratchet's. Do you think so? Please leave the comments below and let me know. And last but not least, yes yeah sure we have to compare with Black Apple Ultimus Prime. So far, this seems like the best skill compared to the side accuracy with the robot mode. That also mean the previous compare with the MPM3 Bumblebee, the Bumblebee figure is definitely too big. Oh, this is exciting! Finally, I have collected all the 2007 Transformer movie Autobot character in front of me. Although after 14 years long waiting, I'm really excited. As a Transformer movie fans and toys collector, I'm making the history. Except the Iron High a bit shorter, I'm actually happy to see them all stand up together. And I'm so glad I can share this moment with you guys. Alright, let's have a closer look with the detail. We start from the head sculpt. I like the detail with the head sculpt, even though better than the model kit that I have. The side view is really nice, only the back side, we can see the big screw hole. It's so quite obviously and I really don't like it. Another thing I really like is the spotlight. Before it released, in the image looks so blue, but when I got it on hand, it's not that bad. And I really like the detail molded and painted inside. Another thing I like is the chest. Inside the chest, there's a molded detail there with a really nice metallic paint, which I didn't see when I do any research. They did a really really nice job on the painting this figure. Not only the yellow part, even though inside the silver and dark metallic silver also the light metallic silver. Possible this is the original molded plastic color, but this is really smart move. I love it. Based on the arm and the printed patterns, they definitely did more than the original NPM 11 ratchets. Alright, next, here we go for the articulation chair. We start from the head scarf first. The head can do 360 rotations and also the collar will be follow. I'm not sure why they do this, maybe because of the transformation need. And the head can tilt up and down slightly. And the mouth can be open just like the iron hide. The arm can lift up like so. And the shoulder can move slightly back and forward. And the shoulder section can be rotated and also move in and out. And the arm can do 360 rotations. There is an the upper arm swivel. And the elbow comes with very nice ratchet joint. Can be bent like so. And the hand got multiple joints that you can open up. You can move to different angles, open up and close the fingers. And also the both thumb can be open and closed. Because of the transformation need, the waist can be rotated 360 easily. The waist can be bent, but you might need to hold these two panels. In this side panel actually make from soft rubber. You can still do a waistband, but it will not perform well. Or you can try to detach them to do a best waistband if you need. The leg is come with very strong larger joint and can split up like so. And can keep forward like that far. And the backward only can go that far because of the backpack. And again, the knees band is been limited because all the side panels. The knees can be swiveled in 360. But another good thing is, because of the transformation need, under the knee band there are double joints. So what you need to do, you need to open these panels 
create some space and then release the section on the joint like so and you can do a full bend of both legs because the knee joint is dark color even though you do this you won't see obviously the feet is made from die cast but the side swivel are quite limited but at the front can do not that far because of the transformation need I would say the articulation on this figure is fantastic. So far when I'm doing a research, they just do a basic pose and I'm so impressed. He not only can do a pose that match with the CGI, even though he can do a fantastic landing pose. And I'm so happy with the articulation and I hope all the Transformer designer keep this advantage for the future Transformer figure. Alright, next we review the weapons. First is the arm cannons. As you can see, the detail was stunning, I would say. The joint part is mixed from very nice soft plastic materials and it molded with a dark metallic color that I really like with the blue metallic detail highlight and painted with the yellow color matched with the figure. And also, the detail is a lot better. Even though compared with my Iron Warrior model kit, as we can see, it has improved tremendously. It's also very simple to apply. Fold the hand inward and there is a slot. All you need is just plug it in. And next is the iconic arm blades. Both blades can be rotated individually and molded with good detail and painted in silver color. And at the handle again, it's come with a soft plastic joint, also molded with some great detail. Let's compare with the Iron Warrior arm blade. The Iron Warrior arm blade actually comes with better detail compared to the MPM Ratchet. It's the same way to apply the arm blade to the arm. Simply line it up and slot into the holes on the arm. And last but not least is the pair of arm missiles. They're both paint in white and highlight with the dark metallic silver. To apply again, it's very simple. On the side of the arm that is too whole, simply just line it up and push it in. Another way is you can also display together with the arm blade. Next is the transformation, Autobot transform! First, we release the chest part and unfold it, the side panel. In the spotlight, it just press it down. If you can get all the way through, all you need is slot in the tools, simply pull it down so they will sit perfectly. Now we can slide in the bumper in the positions. Release these two panels. Release these shoulder sections. And then we can release the backpack. Hold the windshield in this way and simply push and release the joint. Now you can release the whole backpack. Just leave it like this for this moment. And under the chest part, we need to release these sections. Flip up the windshield, release the wheel on the side, like so. Adjust the front side panels. And then we can start to rotate the whole sections. You might need to adjust it to get all the way through. Line it up correctly. This is what we need and fold the windshield to the correct position and lock it down. And now we work on the arm. Fold the finger and the hand in this way. Rotate this door section on the shoulders and now work on the wheel. Line it up correctly, there is a hole. Under the wheel, there is a pin. We need to pinch in correctly. Rotate the arm in this angle and inside the body, you can see the two pinch that which is matched with the shoulder and the arm holes. Fold it in carefully and line up correctly. It's lock both sections in place. This is crucial, just make sure you lock both of the arm in the correct position so they will hold the body correctly. It will not present gap here after you finish with the vehicle mode transformations. Let's do the other arm in the same way. Fold the finger like so. Rotate the shoulder section in this angle. Make sure the arm and the shoulder holes are lined up together in the same way. Fold it in the arm and then we can line up and start fold it to the body. Just make sure both of the pinch have pinched in completely. Push forward these sections. This is also important, you must push it forward in order to have the door collapse correctly. Now we need to line up the door and lock it in place. And the front section we can slot in first or you can do it after. But I prefer to put it in first so it will be easy for me to line up the door and lock it in place. And we do the same on the other side. Line up the door correctly, lock it in place and then you can put the front section in the positions and this is look good until they see they have no gap moving forward for next step 
Rotate the head and the neck facing inward. Now we start work on the leg. Release this outside five sections. Fold it in and lock it in place. Open up like so. Rotate the lower leg. Straighten the feet. Fold it in the back toe sections. Release this section by pulling it out. And then open the side panel like so. And then unfold the panel. And also unfold this panel as well. You need to make sure this panel is straightened. And we do the same on the other leg as well. Open this side panel and fold it in. Rotate the lower feet. Release these whole sections. Unfold the panel. And then unfold these sections. And straighten up. Line up in place like so. Now we have to bend both feet with the double joint. And we can see the pin on the feet. Now join them together. As you can see on the feet that I have a scratch mark there. The next part is also crucial. You need to place your finger in both feet and push it down while collapsing. Until the both feet are inside, they will be secure. And next, we got to tidy up the side panels. Line it up correctly and push it in part by part. And we can slot in the lower panel now or you can do it later. But I prefer to do it now. So far so good, until now only the top section which is the backpack we need to tidy it up. You need to be aware there is a slot here. You need to slot it in this panel as you can see. This is crucial, when you've done this right on the both sides, the top panel will fit perfectly. And now we just need to line up correctly and then fold it back and push it in like so. At the same time set the wheel on the right angle and we can collapse the whole top section start by lining in the side slot sections. And also tidy up the other part, simply angle up and push it in the right positions. And then at the tail part, all you need to do is push the whole section down and to collapse it in. Now it's all done, as you can see the gap has been minimized. When you've done it correctly, as you can see, the corner is fit perfectly and you're not showing any gap. Last but not least is the rack section on the top of the vehicles. So what we need is just fold it down, fold the spotlight inward like so. And then you can join up together. In this side, you can see the pinch here. All you need is line it up and pinch it in on the both sides. And finally, we line up the sirens, collapse it together. And the final touch is, I will pull up this bumper. Because when I compare with the real vehicle image, this bumper actually set higher like this. Alright, here we go. We have the ratchet in the vehicle mode. Transform complete and roll down. Wow, as you can see, the vehicle rode really really well. And let's have a closer look at the detail. So far, I would say this is one of the great presentation of Transformer Rogers in the vehicle mode. The paint job is not bad, but still some part need to be improved. The most downside, I believe, is under the vehicle and we can see the head, especially the screw hole part. I really don't like it. I hope they actually create the panel to cover it like a Voyager Cars Rogers before. Although the Ratchet's vehicle mode is good and is more, they actually create a weapon storage in the vehicle mode. The arm blade you can simply clip in on the back bumper. So this is how it looks like. And the arm cannon set, you can store it just right inside the front wheel. Straighten it, the top spare tire, the arm cannon can just simply plug in. When talk about the Voyager class, and surprisingly, this NPM11 Rogers almost the same size with the Voyager class in all angles, even though the width of the vehicles. From this side, we can see the Voyager class actually slightly taller compared to the Masterpiece Ratchet. And next, we compare with the NPM3 Bumblebee. As we can see, the Bumblebee scale quite okay with this Masterpiece compared to the size comparison reference. Alright, next we welcome back our NPM Ironhide. The Ironhide actually skilled really nice with the Ratchets based on the reference image. The length is good, but still I think Ironhide should be slightly taller. So what do you think? Please leave the comments below and let me know. And sure, we have to compare with the Black Apple Optimus Prime in the truck mode. Based on the image reference, I think it fits fantastically. 
no matter from the front and the side it will be great to display it in the vehicle mode together all right here we have the 2007 transformer movie character all in the vehicle mode what do you think is this the right scale you know what i'm gonna show you something even crazier Ta-da! Alright, you might feel so weird. What is this combination? As you can see, I have a leader class Ultimate Prime, Masterpiece Iron High and Ratchet. Unfortunately, the Deluxe card chest I think is too big. That's why I replaces my repaint figure Dark of the Moon MacTech Deluxe Side Swipe. And also, I have a 2008 The Deluxe Class Bumblebee. To complete the scenes, I also added the MacTech Deluxe Barricade. Alright, here is the magic. Did you see? Did you see? I know it's crazy, but so far, this is the best match for the 2007 Transformer movie vehicle size. What do you think? What do you think? Please leave the comments below and let me know. Alright, here's the conclusions. On the design wise, the MPM11, I mean the original design, is one of the top design in the movie masterpiece series. Even though I put it beside the Black Apple Ultimus Prime, which is already upgraded from the MPM4, it still stand out. But unfortunately, the paint job is ruining everything. It just looks like unfinished. How could you call the masterpiece but look like studio series? And I'm seriously the one to buy something incomplete. To get its KO version, it's just another option. What this figure does is simple. They did a good paint job. Or another way to say is they finished something supposed to be glorious. I bought myself a lot of expensive third-party figure. What they did is they take their time and understand what we need and deliver a complete and satisfaction to all collector. That is exactly what we want. Because I'm too excited about this figure, in the next video, I will do a battle damage repaint and custom made on this figure. Even though you have the original MPM 11s, I hope the next video will give you some idea how to make it better. Alright, here's a wrap and I'm so glad you stayed until now. As usual, I will end this video with a quick transformation from the vehicle to a robot mode. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss the coming soon video. I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.